Our third point, Christ serves us with his word. He continues to explain this word, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of his mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So there's a, it was hidden, but now it's revealed. And there's still great mysteries in the gospel that are going to can entertain our minds and our hearts for, for the rest of our life. The incarnation, the trinity. There are still some great mysteries that are revealed, but we, we can't comprehend them. But here Paul is saying the mystery that was hidden for ages is now revealed. If you're with us in Genesis, God made a promise early on. I will reverse the curse. I will send a son. And the mystery was always, who will this son be? How could he possibly fix all that's wrong in the world? Well, we actually live on the side of the revelation of that mystery. We have a great benefit, a great privilege today to be able to look at not just what the Old Testament was saying was going to happen, but all of Scripture so we can see the New Testament declares what has happened and what is yet still to happen. We get to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. The mystery revealed. The riches of the glory. The hope of glory. Well, what is that mystery? What is that revealed truth? It's that Christ is our righteousness. God himself looked down upon us and saw that we had gone awry. We have gone astray. We had rebelled against him and there was no way we could help each other or ourselves. We were destroying ourselves, and we were doomed for ultimate destruction. So God himself, the Father, sent his Son, who was fully divine, to take on a nature just like us, fully human, so that he could live the life we were supposed to. He could live the life of obedience, perfectly obeying God as a man, so that he would die in our place. The innocent man dies the death that he doesn't deserve so that we who deserve death could have life. Because on the cross, the Father poured out all his wrath on Jesus Christ, the innocent man who is also God, so that whoever believes in him is no longer guilty of their sin. The wrath of God has been satisfied. A good God must punish all sin, and the sin will either be punished when we see God face to face in our own judgment, or if we believe in Him, that sin is punished in Christ. It's the beauty of the gospel. That's the riches of the glory that we no longer face a judgment if we believe in Christ because He was judged for us. And the way we receive the benefit of the life that He gives and the judgment that He takes is by believing in Him, depending upon Him. Christian. Paul talks in in great language here. It's the riches of the glory. It's the hope of the glory. Is your greatest treasure Christ? Is that truly what you treasure most and long for most? To know Christ and His risen nature. To know Him and His resurrection and the benefits that He bestows upon all His children. Or is it anything else in this world? Are we hoping for the glory that is to come, or are we glorying in things of this world? If you're not a Christian this morning, where is your hope? Where is your hope? Your hope beyond the destruction of your own sin? Your hope beyond the grave when you'll be judged for your sin? There is no hope beyond or outside of Jesus Christ. Your hope alone is in Jesus Christ. What you must do is see your need of Him, see His absolute sufficiency, and trust Him. It takes a a, a humility to see that there's something wrong with me that I can't fix. I see this man who is also God, and he says he can fix it. He can fix it. Free me from it. He can save me from it. We must lean and depend upon Him. That 
is what faith is. 